In a world where electronic music often blurs into a single pulsating entity, there exists a man who bends sound waves like Beckham bends footballs. Hold up, if you stumbled here looking for the famed hospital or uni, Johns Hopkins, slight typo alert. We're diving into John Hopkins today, less about medical degrees and more about musical ecstasy. So if you're ready to swap stethoscopes for synthesizers, you're in the right class. Today in this video, we're going to deep dive into the history, the mind and the ethereal soundscapes of a musical genius who proves electronic music can be therapeutic. Yo, I'm Anglo and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And stick around till the end of this video and learn some psychedelic mind-bending advanced music production techniques that you can apply in your own compositions in your choice of doors. And hey, I have some free royalty free loops for you from what we make in this video as a thank you for the 500 subscriber mark. More on that at the end. Before we delve into the mystical world of John Hopkins, let's address the neon elephant in the room. Some of you might be thinking, ah, but mere mortals cannot simply ascend to the Hopkins-esque echelons of musical enlightenment. And before you go typing smack in the comments, to that I say, we're not here to clone a John Hopkins from a DNA sample we found on an old Yamaha piano. No, in my videos, we're here to absorb, learn, and maybe borrow a technique or two from the artists we admire. After all, one of the greatest producers of our generation and the only guru in our shady self-help guru best-ridden world I look up to is Rick Rubin. And this is what he said on the Broken Records podcast. People start... The first thing you do is through imitation, just to kind of figure out how to do it. Yeah. And then slowly it just starts becoming more you and less them just happens even without trying. Like It, yeah. it just happens, you yeah. know, you kind of run out of their stuff to copy and you're still making stuff and now it's new. Strap in YouTube scholars and fellow sound travelers as we explore the enigmatic world of John Hopkins, a man whose music can be more intricate than your relationship status on social media. Jonathan Julian Hopkins was born on 15th August in 1979. He grew up in Wimbledon, UK. This Londoner started his journey tickling the ivories at the age of four. I do use um, real piano in, in quite a lot of my stuff. It's the same piano I've had since I was about eight years old. My parents got when I was a kid and um, it's just a Yamaha upright. But at a young age, John discovered the pulsating world of electronic music, getting hooked on Depeche Mode and the Pet Shop Boys. By the age of 12, he wasn't just fiddling with piano keys at the Royal College of Music. He was crafting the future of electronica, inspired by Ravel and Stravinsky. That said, while most of us were figuring out how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop, John was mastering counterpoint. Fast forward to the years of classical training and Hopkins dives headfirst into the electronical musical scene, blending his classical roots with the limitless possibilities of electronic music. Imagine Beethoven with a MacBook. That's John Hopkins for you. John Hopkins in 2001 released his first studio album, Opalison, under Just Music, an independent London label, introducing his signature electronic style. He released his second album, Contact Note, on Just Music in 2004. From 2004 to 2007, Hopkins worked with artists like Brian Eno and Coldplay becoming a key figure on Coldplay's Viva La Vida album in 2007. His third album, Insights, dropped in 2009, further establishing his electronic music prowess. Now, let's get to the beats. Hopkins' music is like if your brain went on a spa day in space. It's ambient, techno, with a sprinkle of classical. It's like he's conducting an orchestra of circuit boards. Collaborating with the likes of Brian Eno and Coldplay, Hopkins doesn't just create tracks, he creates atmospheres. His album Immunity, a sonic odyssey that could make even a Dalek cry. And Singularity, a musical representation of the universe expanding and then taking a nap. His third album from 2009, Insides, danced its way to the number 15, while Immunity and Singularity not only captured imaginations, but snagged a Mercury Prize nominations and a Grammy nod. Then came the music of psychedelic therapy. Specifically like electronic based uh -huh. psychedelic music, uh -huh. which I personally think has just, you know, it's just such a profoundly, it just feels like it just, there's just such potential. A bridge between sounds and the subconscious echoing his ventures into the realms of meditative soundscapes. 
fun fact, did you know he scored the soundtrack for the film Monsters? Yes, our Sonic Shaman has his fingerprints on the silver screen, earning an Ivor Novello Award nomination for the best original score. From the depths of cinematic score to the peaks of electronic albums, Hopkins' versatility knows no bounds. So what makes John tick? I get asked a lot about what images I have in my head or what I want people to be seeing when they're um, when they're listening to the stuff and the reality for me is that there's nothing at all apart from a kind of a kind of mild synesthesia where I, I will see a 3D structure in my head kind of as how the track is and that kind of allows me to play some mixings but it's not uh, it's completely abstract and there's no real way of describing it from the man himself we've gleaned that intuition is his guiding star Growing up with a Yamaha upright piano as his first ally, John's journey into soundscapes was as much about the notes as the spaces between them. He's a firm believer in meditation. Um, I think learning to meditate properly, learning to meditate and learning um, various forms of mindfulness and, and just having a lot of interesting a conversations. A practice that helped him combat insomnia and now serves as his gateway to a neutral state, a blank canvas for his sonic universe. But what can we mere mortals learn from Hopkins' production ethos, you may ask? Three words. Texture, dynamics, and emotion. His tracks aren't just heard, they're felt. They don't just drop, they evolve. It's like painting with sound. And speaking of sonic universes, Hopkins has had a profound perspective on electronic music. He says, no, I don't know, for me, creates the fact with electronic music, yeah, I still use the piano, but... Electronic music, you're creating the instrument. You're not just creating the melodies, you're actually making this, the sonic universe that people can then inhabit. And that to me is unbeatable. So you want to channel your inner Hopkins. Start by forgetting everything you know about drop. In Hopkins' world, it's all about the journey. Each track is a narrator. Think of it as composing a score for a film that hasn't even been made yet. Experiment with natural sound. Hopkins might record a washing machine and turn it into a beat. So the next time your appliance breaks down, consider it a sign from the music gods. Most importantly, Hopkins teaches us to be fearless in our creativity, to blend genres and to break rules, and to find our own unique sound in the cacophony of the digital age. This philosophy underpins his respect for all musical genres, including pop, viewing them as expressions of the same universal love for music. Now for those gearheads and synth nerds, John's got a soft spot for his Moog one, powerful and wise, transforming his musical landscape. The fun fact I got off of Reddit, John's favorite non-electronic album is A River Ain't Too Much To Love by Smog. His studio is brimming with magical devices where the alchemy of sound transpires. Amongst his prized possessions was a Korg MS-20, a beast of a synthesizer. The MS-20 meant that I was able to write a kind of more techno line, than, uh, which I'd never tried to do before. So that's the kind of basic example of how a new sound will kind of write a new tune for me. Rumored to be the source of the hypnotic grooves in Open Eye Signal. John is also seen using the Korg Chaos Pad 3 with the triad of chaos. With a mere swipe of his fingers, John could warp time and space, creating ripples in the sonic fabric of the universe. Alright, diving into FL Studio to summon our inner John Hopkins. Wait, where's the turn into John Hopkins plugin? Ah, it must be under settings? Unrealistic expectations? No worries, we'll just swing it and hope for a touch of his genius to hit us by accident. Nah, I'm kidding. The song we're going to try and recreate today is going to be off of his album, Immunity. So these are the synths and sound banks I used in today's video. Before diving in, let's tip our hats to some incredible YouTubers whose deep dives into John Hopkins sound design have been a game changer for me. Their detailed analysis truly unpacks the magic behind his techniques and I've linked the channels below for you to explore that further. In this FL Studio breakdown, I started with a perk loop. Employing John Hopkins mastery of syncopation to craft an offbeat rhythm. Adding a syncopated synth enhances the track's bounce. Complemented by unique toppers and a wonky sound in F major.
I then used a DX7 emulation for that rumbly bass sound. I sidechained that and automated that for some dynamic progression. I processed a hi-hat loop using the Fruity Granulizer and Edison for a trippy effect, adjusting pan and grain spacing. Then I used different hats to layer up the rhythm. This included faster and slower hats with shakers to enrich the mix of the drum spectrum. Then I layered textural sounds processed with Crush, a free plugin, links in the description, adding a ride for top end swing. Then I incorporated some electronic glitch sounds for complexity and variation. Using Analog Lab for evolving pads, I cut out the low end and applied stereo shapers. For the piano section, I emphasize the piano by drenching it in reverb and stereo enhancement. For the synth sound design, I use synth sounds using the 3x oscillator, focusing on automation for the evolution of the track. Lastly, I added some ups and some effects layering the lead for depth. Apply sidechain and crush on the drum bus for texture. For the outro of this track, I introduce an acid bass line from the Arturias ARP plugin, focusing on drums and texture. For some final texturing in the intro and outro of the song, I added fireplace sound, strings, and heavily processed pads and vocal chops for finishing touches. Remember to follow me on all streaming platforms and Spotify for weekly ambient electronic tunes and curated playlists by your boy. Let's not get too tangled in genre labels. If John taught us anything, it's that music transcends these boundaries. So whether you're into K-pop, J-pop, or any pop, remember, respect is key. And who knows, by mixing all of them together, you might just create the next big hit, or just a really confused Spotify algorithm. Diving into John Hopkins' work teaches us more than just music production techniques. It's a lesson in fearlessness, intuition, and the pursuit of a unique sound. So let's channel Ayana Hopkins, not by imitating, but by inspiring our own kid. Wow, 500 subscribers already. That's like 500 times more people than I expected to accidentally click subscribe while trying to swipe away a fly from their screen. Jokes aside, your support has been overwhelming. And as a token of my gratitude, I've cooked up something special. The 500th sub-special soundbite, inspired by none other than John Hopkins technique. Yes. You heard that right. I'm dropping seven WAV file samples of synth, basslines, and ARPs handcrafted in my musical kitchen. And it's up for grabs on my Buy Me A Coffee page. Absolutely free, because who charges for a gift, right? But act fast, as they're just 20 exclusive copies and they're disappearing faster than my motivation to make the next video. Feel free to use them in any way you fancy. And if you're feeling social, tag me on Lord Own Records on Insta or drop the links in the comment section in any of my videos. Let's see what magic you create. Now let's keep it 100. I'm on a mission, diving deep into the matrix of music.
masters like Oliver Arnold, John Hopkins, decoding their wizardry and spilling the beans for you right here on YouTube. Why? Was in this world of copy paste beats, being a music mage is what sets you apart. So if you're down for cracking the code of legends, smashing that subscribe button is your first quest. I'm gunning for 1k subs. Cause let's face it, inflation's hitting us harder than a bass drop at a festival. Your click is my mana. Let's level up together in this game of beats. Stay lit, stay inspired, and most importantly, stay creative. Until next time, I'm Anglo. Peace out.